2017 Porsche 718 Cayman SPDK Automatic. In our previous reviews of the stablemates for this 2017 Porsche 718 Cayman S, the Boxster, Boxster S, and base Cayman, we've already detailed the transformation from the previous naturally aspirated six-cylinder engine to turbocharged flat four power. In short, the new engines are more powerful but sound completely different. This transformation stirs the bait. Is a forced induction four banger that makes more power better than the former naturally aspirated flat six that needed to be run out treadline to make power but sounded so beautiful while doing it? The new 2.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder generates 350 horsepower, 25 more than the old 3.4-liter six, but it does not create operatic music. It instead emits a raspy, uncouth sound that strikes some drivers as unpleasant or ingrating in the way people can't figure out how that Nasley Dillon character landed a Nobel Prize for literature. It's just so artless, they complain. In the case of this S model, and Bob Dylan, for that matter, they've got a point about the singing voice, but they're wrong about artistry. Home, reviews, Porsche, 718 Cayman, 2017 Porsche 718 Cayman SPDK Automatic, Instrumented Test View 61 Photos. Instrumented Test 2017 Porsche 718 Cayman SPDK Automatic More Holistic Than Before. Nov 2016 by Kevin A. Wilson Photography by Michael Samari Share Tweet and our previous reviews of the stablemates for this 2017 Porsche 718 Cayman S, the Boxster, Boxster S, and Base Cayman, we've already detailed the transformation from the previous naturally aspirated six-cylinder engine to turbocharged flat four power. In short, the new engines are more powerful but sound completely different. This transformation stirs the bait. Is a forced induction four banger that makes more power better than the former naturally aspirated flat six that needed to be run out treadline to make power but sounded so beautiful while doing it? The new 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder generates 350 horsepower, 25 more than the old 3.4 liter six, but it does not create operatic music. It instead emits a raspy, uncouth sound that strikes some drivers as unpleasant or ingrating in the way people can't figure out how that Nasley Dillon character landed a Nobel Prize for literature. It's just so artless, they complain. In the case of this S model, and Bob Dylan, for that matter, they've got a point about the singing voice, but they're wrong about artistry. View 61 photos linear power delivery with 0.5 liter more displacement and a variable vein turbocharger that comes into play earlier in the rev range. The S doesn't suffer the turbo lag we noted in our test of the base Cayman with the manual transmission. It makes less boost, a maximum 14.5 pounds per square inch versus 20.3 for the 2.0 liter and its specific output of 140 horsepower per liter is lower than the 2.0 liter model's 151, which means, depending on who's reading, either that it's less stressed or that there's more room for aftermarket tuning enhancements. The larger point is that there's a linearity to this engine's response that, we'll argue, makes it worth considering an S model with fewer options versus slowing a base Cayman with Porsche's notoriously pricey add-ons, despite a $12,400 gap in their base MSRPs. Look at a graph of the torque and power curves, depicted in this review of a 2017 718 Boxster S, and you can see why, below 2000 revolutions per minute the 2.0 liter engine's torque output sags like a loosely strung power line before it rises steeply toward the broad plateau from 2000 to 4500 revolutions per minute. In the S version, by contrast, the 2.5 liters toward curve makes a straight line to its higher but similarly broad peak output. Turn your attention to horsepower and the new Cayman S shows a straighter, smoother line from idle to its 6,500 revolution per minute power crest and did the 2014 to 2016 Cayman S with the flat 6 that peaked at 7,200 revolutions per minute. 
the latter had an agreeably split personality, mildly entertaining at low RPM but with a pulse quickening ride threadline once the variable intake valve system came into play around 4000 revolutions per minute. This on the cam sensation can be delightful in the right circumstances, and the auditory results won praise from drivers of our long term 2014 Cayman S that said, the ideal power curve wouldn't curve at all but rise on a constant upward slope, with each additional 100 revolutions per minute accompanied by exactly the same portion of added power. The new Cayman S engine comes closer to that ideal than the old one did. In practice, Coupled with our test car's 7-speed PDK dual clutch automatic transmission, this results in a more nearly perfect Cayman. Mind you, that's in the context of a car we've been putting on our 10 best cars list pretty consistently for a decade, it missed joining the Boxster in 2013 only due to a model year changeover hiccup. Getting closer to perfection when you're almost there is an incremental business, home, reviews, Porsche, 718 Cayman, 2017 Porsche 718 Cayman SPDK Automatic, Instrumented Test View 61 Photos. Instrumented Test 2017 Porsche 718 Cayman SPDK Automatic More Holistic Than Before. No 2016 by Kevin A. Wilson Photography by Michael Samari Share Tweet and our previous reviews of the stablemates for this 2017 Porsche 718 Cayman S, the Boxster, Boxster S, and Base Cayman. We've already detailed the transformation from the previous naturally aspirated six-cylinder engine to turbocharged flat four power. In short, the new engines are more powerful but sound completely different. This transformation stirs debate. Is a forced induction four banger that makes more power better than the former naturally aspirated flat six that needed to be run out threadline to make power but sounded so beautiful while doing it? The new 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder generates 350 horsepower, 25 more than the old 3.4 liter six, but it does not create operatic music. It instead emits a raspy, uncouth sound that strikes some drivers as unpleasant or grating in the way people can't figure out how that Nasley Dillon character landed a Nobel Prize for literature. It's just so artless, they complain. In the case of this S model, and Bob Dylan, for that matter, they've got a point about the singing voice, but they're wrong about artistry. View 61 photos linear power delivery with 0.5 liter more displacement and a variable vein turbocharger that comes into play earlier in the rev range. The S doesn't suffer the turbo lag we noted in our test of the base Cayman with the manual transmission. It makes less boost, a maximum 14.5 pounds per square inch versus 20.3 for the 2.0 liter, and its specific output of 140 horsepower per liter is lower than the 2.0 liter model's 151, which means, depending on who's reading, either that it's less stressed or that there's more room for aftermarket tuning enhancements. The larger point is that there's a linearity to this engine's response that, we'll argue, makes it worth considering an S model with fewer options versus loading a base Cayman with Porsche's notoriously pricey add-ons, despite a $12,400 gap in their base MSRPs. Look at a graph of the torque and power curves, depicted in this review of a 2017 718 Boxster S, and you can see why, below 2000 revolutions per minute the 2.0 liter engines to work out what sags like a loosely strung power line before it rises steeply toward the broad plateau from 2000 to 4500 revolutions per minute. In the S version, by contrast, the 2.5 liters to work curve makes a straight line to its higher but similarly broad peak output. Turn your attention to horsepower and the new Cayman S shows a straighter, smoother line from idle to its 6,500 revolution per minute power crest than did the 2014 to 2016 Cayman S with the flat 6 that peaked at 7,200 revolutions per minute. The latter had an agreeably split personality, mildly entertaining at low RPM but with a pulse quickening ride threadline once the variable intake valve system came into play around 4,000 revolutions per minute. 
This on-the-cam sensation can be delightful in the right circumstances, and the auditory results won praise from drivers of our long-term 2014 Cayman S that said, the ideal power curve wouldn't curve at all but rise on a constant upward slope, with each additional 100 revolutions per minute accompanied by exactly the same portion of added power. The new Cayman S engine comes closer to that ideal than the old one did. In practice, coupled with our test car's 7-speed PDK dual clutch automatic transmission, this results in a more nearly perfect Cayman. Mind you, that's in the context of a car we've been putting on our 10 best cars list pretty consistently for a decade, it missed joining the Boxster in 2013 only due to a model year changeover hiccup. Getting closer to perfection when you're almost there is an incremental business. View 61 photos one measurable increment in this instance is an improvement in 0 to 60 mile per hour acceleration to 3.6 seconds, fully 0.5 second quicker than our test result for the 2014 Cayman S with PDK. The advantage extends to all our acceleration tests, with the quarter mile happening in 12.0 seconds at 117 miles per hour beating the old car by 0.6 second and 5 miles per hour, and the 30 to 50 mile per hour and 50 to 70 mile per hour tasks being completed 0.3 and 0.1 second quicker. Both cars had the launch control function that generally sees PDK equipped Porsches outrunning their manual transmission equivalents that lack that feature. The new car's advantage in our 5 to 60 mile per hour rolling start test that obviates launch control's advantage improved to 4.4 seconds from the old model's 5.1. Besides which, the Cayman S responds to throttle input superbly, delivering that just right sensation that one iota more or less pressure on the pedal will result in exactly one iota more or less thrust. Modern electronics can help manage this feeling much better than in the old days of cables and levers, but it requires fine-tuning to make the controls, the engine, and the transmission programming all come together, and Porsche clearly has been painstakingly attentive here, bend the road, bend your mind. All of which works superbly in concert with the balance on road holding this mid-engine sports car delivers when the road turns. Find your favorite test bend, preferably one like that on our undulating 10 best test loop, steer the Cayman through it, and there's nothing else short of a supercar that delivers the way this Porsche does. It goes exactly where you point it and manages left, right transitions with a aplomb. Get your inputs wrong so that you need to adjust your line, and the car shrugs off added steering, braking, or mild throttle amendments without a care. If you'd ask us what needed improvement on the Cayman, steering and handling would have been low on our list, and yet the 718 has firmer springs and dampers and a quicker steering ratio that together make this exercise even more rewarding than previously. Our test car had the PASM option, $2,070, that brings both adaptive dampers and a 0.8-inch lower ride height, the Porsche to work vectoring system, $1,320, and the Sport Chrono Pack, $2,440. Our long-term 2014 car was similar, except it had the non-adaptive sport suspension in place of PASM, and they all work so well that we'd recommend any Cayman buyer consider that collective investment mandatory, Porsche should really just bump up the base price and include it all as standard on the S, at least. We'd also recommend this car's $800 sport seats plus and its GT Sport steering wheel, a $320 option we would not having in our long-termer. This Cayman S circled our skid pad at 1.02 grams on its optional 20-inch Carrera S wheels, $1,580, shod with Pirelli P0 rubber. That's a negligible 0.01 grams behind our long-term car's grip, which was matched by the regular 718 came and tested earlier. For people who remember when only been race cars could corner at 1.00 grams, the amount of grip available on the open road is astonishing, but the car's manners as it approaches the limit are even more so. On our skid pad, it understeered even less than did a Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport pulling 1.18 grams in the same test. 
The Cayman stopped from 70 miles per hour in an excellent 142 feet, another number the light price Grand Sport can better, 129 feet, by virtue of its grippier Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. The Porsche vs Corvette question can continue fueling the bench racer debates for years to come, but the engineers developing Chevrolet's mid-engine C8 are sure to be benchmarking the Cayman's balance, transitional behavior, and all-around ability, practical matters. Besides the aforementioned performance-enhancing options, the sticker price on our test car was inflated by graphite blue metallic paint, $640. The $3,200 PDK transmission, $530 for seat heaters and another $730 for seat ventilation, plus $760 for seemingly needless dual zone climate control, a $1,535 carbon fiber interior trim package, and $3,030 worth of infotainment. $1,300 for Porsche Connect Plus and $1,730 for the navigation module in the Porsche Communication Management, or PCM. Add auto dimming mirrors with rain sensors, $690, a light design package, $340, and $185 to have colored Porsche crests in the wheel center caps, all items we could live without. Those committed to the fully immersive driving experience might start pairing that list with the PDK, opting instead for the six-speed manual transmission and the clutch pedal, but the dual-clutch alternative works so well in its paddle-shifting manual mode that the only real argument against it is the price. Buyers planning to drive their sports cars daily, as opposed to exclusively on weekends and at the track might find the Cayman S a little short on comforts like functional, accessible cup holders or easy storage for your phone and oddments. Decide for yourself how to compare the utility of front and rear trunks that together add up to the same 15 cubic feet of space you'd find in a Corvette. Which brings us to the last option on our test car, the Sport Exhaust System, with tailpipes in silver for $2,450. We'd recommend it, not so much for the louder exhaust note when it's flaps open, but for the improved character of the resulting sound. We took to pressing the button every time we got in the car just to tweak the most objectionable flatulent tones out of the low RPM exhaust note in around town use. Even at its loudest, the new car measures a 4 dB quieter at wide open throttle and 1 dB less at a 70 mph cruise than did our long-term car with its similar option. Reducing cylinder count and turbocharging will always change the engine sound in ways enthusiasts don't love. Ask any Formula 1 fan about the latest generation cars, so we must be forgiven for this fine wine. But it's an essentially pointless argument. Ignore those itching to pick a fight with, it just doesn't sound like a Porsche. Drive a 718 Cayman S for 3 minutes and there's no question it's a Porsche. So that noise you hear? That's what this Porsche sounds like. It's not as if some treasured heritage rests solely in the sound of 6 cylinders deployed pancake fashion. The 944 and 968 turbos for 4-cylinder forced induction Porsches, the 356, 914, and 912 were flat fours. If a 911 doesn't sound like a 928 that doesn't sound like a Cayenne, so what? Did Derek Bell climb out of his 962C after winning the 1987 24 Hours of Le Mans and complained that it just didn't sound as sweet as the 917 he'd driven in 1971? No, he did not. Because he was about getting on down the road. And, uh, he had earplugs. Just get in the car and drive the wheels off the thing, already.